praise. Let's just praise him because great is our God and greatly to be praised. Let's thank him because he's so compassionate. Let's thank him because he's caring. Let's thank him because he's a lovely God. Let's just thank the Lord because he's great and greatly to be praised. Let's thank him for being our defender. Let's thank him for being our shield. Let's thank him for being the glory and the lifter of our heads. Let's just celebrate the Lord for everything that he has done in your life, everything that he's done in your family, everything that he has done concerning you in the name of Jesus. Let's just call on to the name of the Lord because he is God most high. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. We can call on him at all times. We can rely on him. We can trust him because he's a mighty God. Let's just thank the Lord because he alone does great wonders and his mercies endure it forever. Let's just celebrate the Lord because he's great. He is powerful. He is excellent. He is mighty in the name of Jesus. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise because you are faithful, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for fighting our battles, Lord. Thank you, O oh God, that when we call unto you, you will hear us. You will answer us, Lord. You will strengthen us and you will make us bold. Thank you for give us, giving us the discernment. Thank you for giving us the grace to, mighty God, determine what you want and what you don't agree with. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for fighting all our battles, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for you are our way maker. Thank you for you are our miracle worker. Thank you for you are the ancient of days. Great is our God and greatly to be praised in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, we bless your name because you're excellent. You are all powerful. You are mighty. You are lovely. You are just. We thank you, O oh God, because you are the giver of life. We thank you, O oh God, that when men think that they are above you, God, you can humble them. In the name of Jesus, we come before you and we just want to say thank you for this wonderful evening. Thank you for having us in your presence. Thank you for giving us the grace, O oh God, to call unto you at all times, knowing that you are too faithful to fail us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, receive our prayers in the name of Jesus. O oh Lord, receive our worship in the mighty name of Jesus. Our master and our defender, we come before you and we say, great are you and greatly to be praised. In the name of Jesus, thank you, holy and everlasting God. Thank you because you are the I am that I am. Thank you because you are the bright morning star. We give you praise and we say, thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for you are all sufficient. Thank you for you are just. Thank you for you are a deliverer. Father, to you deserve the glory, the honor, and the praise. We worship you, almighty God. Thank you for all that you will do as a result of today's prayers. Receive our praise now in the name of Jesus. Receive our worship as we come before your presence, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. So God bless you, everyone, and welcome to this evening prayers that we're having. And um, today we are looking at a very important topic. I really want you to pay attention to all that I have to say today, because a lot of you need to hear this message and also so that you can look at things from a scriptural perspective and also make apply to your own personal life so you won't be taking advantage of by pigs. And, and, and I'll get there why I say such a, a phrase. Amen. All right. So before we get into it, um, for those that are joining us for the first time, every time we meet, we read the Bible. And also, um, if you're returning, we're using the Bible, we're using the names of God Bible version. Right now we are in the book of first Samuel. So we are at first Samuel chapter three. So we're going to take a look at first Samuel chapter three and also First Samuel chapter four. I'm using the names of God Bible version. If you can't access names of God, just use whatever version of the Bible that you have access to. And as you do that, we trust that the Lord will bless you. Amen. All right. So our topic is do not throw your pearls to pigs. That's our topic. We're going to talk about it. Stay tuned. Invite somebody like this video, share it with your friends, your family and loved ones and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Also hit the notification bell so that whenever we go live, 
you'll be able to see us and join us as we pray. All right, so let's turn over quickly to 1 Samuel chapter 3. 1 Samuel chapter 3, let's read it. I'm using Names of God Bible version as we said, and you can use whatever version of the Bible you have access to. Let's do it. The boy Samuel was serving Yahweh under Eli. In those days, a prophecy from Yahweh was rare. Visions were infrequent. One night, Eli was lying down in his room. His eye ha eyesight had begun to fail so that he couldn't see well. The lamp in Elohim's temple hadn't gone out yet. And Samuel was asleep in the temple of Yahweh where the ark of Elohim was kept. Then Yahweh called Samuel. Here I am, Samuel responded. He ran to Eli and said, here I am, you call me. I didn't call you, Eli replied, go back to bed. So Samuel went back and lay down. Yahweh called Samuel again. Samuel got up, went to Eli and said, here I am, you call me. I didn't call you, son, he responded, go back to bed. Samuel had no experience with Yahweh because the word of Yahweh had not yet re been revealed to him. Yahweh called Samuel a third time. Samuel got up, went to Eli and said, here I am, you call me. Then Eli realized that Yahweh was calling the boy. Go lie down, Eli told Samuel. When he calls you, say, speak Yahweh, I am listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his room. Yahweh came and stood there. He called and he called. He called as he had called the other times. Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, Speak, I'm listening. And Yahweh said to Samuel, I'm going to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears it ring. On that day, I'm going to do to Eli and his family everything I said from beginning to end. I told him that I would hand down a permanent judgment against his household because he knew about his son's sin, that they were cursing God, but he didn't try to stop them. That is why I'm, I have taken an oath concerning Eli's family line. No offering or sacrifice will ever be able to make peace for the sins that Eli's family committed. Some will remain in bed until morning. Then he opened the doors of Yahweh's house. But Samuel was afraid to tell Eli about the vision. Then Eli called Samuel. Samuel, my son. He said, here I am. He responded. What did Yahweh tell you? He asked, please don't hide anything from me. May Elohim strike you dead if you hide anything he told you from me. So Samuel told Eli everything. Eli replied, he is Yahweh. May he do what he think is right. Samuel grew up. Yahweh was with him and he didn't let any of his words go unfulfilled. All Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew Samuel was Yahweh's appointed prophet. Yahweh continued to appear in Shiloh since Yahweh revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh through the word of Yahweh. And Samuel spoke to all Israel. Amen. All right. So let's quickly turn over to 1 Samuel chapter 4. 1 Samuel chapter 4. Israel went to fight against the Philistines and camped near Ebenezer while the Philistines camped at Aphek. Philistine organized their troops to meet Israel in battle as the battle spread. The Philistine defeated Israel and killed about 4,000 soldiers in the field. When the troops came back to the camp, the leaders of Israel asked, why has Yahweh used the Philistine to defeat us today? Let's get the ark of Yahweh, Yahweh's promise from Shiloh so that he may be with us and save us from our enemies. The troops sent some men who brought back the ark of the promise of Yahweh's abode who is enthroned with Elohim's ark. When Yahweh's ark came into the camp, all Israel shouted so loudly that the earth rang with echoes. All the Philistines heard the, the noise. They asked, what's all this shouting in the Hebrews' camp? The Philistines found out that Yahweh's ark had come into the camp. Then they were frightened and said, God has come into their camp. They also said, oh no, nothing like this has ever happened before. We're in trouble now. Who can save us from the power of these mighty gods? These are the gods who struck the Egyptians with every kind of plague in the desert. Be strong, Philistines, and act like men, or else you will serve the Hebrews as they served you. Act like men and fight. 
Philistines fought and Israel defeated and the Philistine fought and defeated Israel. Every Israelite soldier fled to his tent. It was a major defeat in which 30,000 Israelite foot soldiers died. The Ark of Elohim was captured. Both of Eli's son, Apni and Phineas died. A man from the tribe of Benjamin ran from the front line of the battle. He went to Shiloh that day with his clothes torn and dirt on his head. When he arrived, Eli was sitting on a chair beside the road watching. He was worried about the Ark of Elohim. The man went into the city to tell the news. The whole city cried out. Hearing the cry, Eli asked, what is this commotion? So the man went quickly to tell Eli the news. Eli was 98 years old and his eyesight had failed so that he couldn't see. The man told Eli, I'm the one who came from the battle. I fled from the front line today. What happened, son? Eli asked. Israel fled from the Philistines. The messengers answered. Our troops suffered heavily, heavy casualties. Their two sons, Hapni and Phineas, are also, also are dead. And the Ark of Elohim has been captured. When the messenger mentioned the Ark of Elohim, Eli fell from his chair backwards toward the gate. He broke his neck and he died. The man was old and heavy. He had judged Israel for 40 years. His daughter-in-law, Phineas's wife, was pregnant. When she heard the news that the Ark of Elohim had been captured and her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she went into labor prematurely and gave birth to a son. As she was dying, the woman helping her said, don't be afraid. You've given birth to a son, but she didn't answer or pay attention. She called the boy Ichabod, which means no glory, saying Israel glory is gone because the Ark of Elohim has been captured and because her father-in-law and her husband died. Israel glory is gone because the Ark of Elohim has been captured, she said. Amen. I pray that none of you will have the name on you spiritually or physically as Ichabod. Amen. Pray that you have the name of glory, the name of honor, the name of power and victory to the glory of God. Amen. All right. So we are looking at the do not throw your pearls to pigs. So do not throw your pearls to pigs. That's what our topic is for today. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. Please take the opportunity to like the video, share with your friends, your family and loved ones. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. So while you're doing that, also, let's grab our Bible. Let's turn over to Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. Let's turn over to Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. All right. So it says, do not. Okay, let's start from verse. Um, let's read the whole thing right down to verse 6. From Matthew chapter 7, 1 to 6. We're going to read it all. It says, judge not that you be not judge. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judge. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eyes, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eyes. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor, nor cast your pearls before swines, lest they trample under them, trample them under their feet, and turn and tear you in pieces. Amen. So that's the word of God right there in Matthew chapter 7, 1 to 6. But we're really focusing on verse 6. So verse 6, if you look at the New King James Version, it says, Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample under, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. Amen. All right. So we see from the scripture there where we get our topics: do not show your pearls to pigs. And we look at the chap um, the, the scripture, Matthew chapter 7, 1 to 6, with an emphasis on verse 6. All right? So some words and phrases in the Bible have been adopted into the English vocabulary. We know that. And so these phrases, such as um, the Good Samaritan, 11th hour, and the prodigal son. 
For those who are not well acquainted with the Bible may not know that these phrases are from the Bible. All right. In Matthew chapter seven, six that we just read, it says, I'll read it again for you. Jesus said, this is the word of Jesus in case you never know. Jesus said, do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. That's what the, the Lord Jesus Christ says. So in this scripture, the phrase do not cast or don't cast your pearls before swine has become a part of the English vocabulary. It has, a, it's a, it, has it was adopted from um, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And we know the Sermon on the Mount is Matthew 5 to 7, right? In the Bible. So read it. It's also good to read. All right. So when you look, for example, into like different dictionaries or different um dances you see so many different uh, explanation on casting your pearls um what does it mean to cast your pearls before swine so collins dictionary um it says that casting your pearls before swine means that you are wasting your time by offering something that is helpful or valuable to someone who does not appreciate or understand it all right so let's get into some more complex dictionary Cambridge Dictionary says something similar. It says to offer, when you cast to swines, it says to, it means to offer something valuable or good to someone who does not know its value. Amen? So that's what um, modern day dictionary is saying, right? So these definitions, they capture the everyday usage or of the phrase. But what Jesus exactly was talking about was when he made the statement that he said he was talking about the dogs and the swines. Okay, so let's look at that. So, Jesus was talking about the dogs and the swines. But the truth is that does the meaning in the daily usage of the phrase is the same as the meaning in the context in which Jesus used the phrase? We'll find out now. So, what Jesus dealt with before he made that statement was the issue of judging others. We read that in Matthew chapter one, seven, one to five. I can quickly read it for you. It says, judge not that you, that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with what, what, and with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eyes, but you do not see the plank in your own eye? Or how can you see, or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite, remove the, the, remove the plank from your own eye. And then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Amen? So based on the passage, many people have stopped others from you know, calling their attention to the wrong they have done. Saying that, you know, Jesus said, judge not that you may not be judged. To them, Jesus forbade any form of judging others. But that would be wrong looking at the statement within the context that Jesus made it. Amen? So in Matthew chapter 7, 1 to 5, Jesus did not forbid a Christian to correct others who have, gone, who have done wrong or sin in the motive is if the motive or if or sin if the motive is to help them. So after all, we see in Galatians chapter 6, 1, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, if another Christian is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back on the right path and be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Amen? You can see that in New Living Translation, Galatians 6.1. So what Jesus is against in Matthew 7, 1 to 5 is a hypocritical, self-righteous attitude, a judgmental disposition, or an unfair criticism is against a holier than thou stance. And if we are not to judge at all, Jesus would not have said, do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. Amen. And, but when we judge or but when you judge or we judge, um, don't assume an air of superiority over them. Right. Don't try to be superior over them. So, it was after dealing with the issue of the hypocritical self-righteous judgment that Jesus said, do not give 
what is holy to the dogs, nor cause your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. What Jesus talked about, um, or when Jesus talked about dogs and pigs, he wasn't talking about animals. He was talking about human beings who manifested some attributes of dogs and pigs. So most references to dogs and pigs in the Bible are negative, and we all know that. All right? So going back to the issue of not judging others, if Jesus forbade all forms of judgment, we will be wrong to call some people dogs or even swines or pigs. However, hypocritical judgment is different from discernment. We must avoid hypocritical judgment, but in relating to people, we must discern those who are dogs or pigs. And that's a fact. Amen? So in Jesus' days, dogs and pigs were not viewed the way society views them today. Dogs were not pets. They were wild, fierce, banded together in packs and fed on refuse or garbage. It was derogatory to call someone a dog. The Bible regards unbelievers who will not enter to New Jerusalem as dogs. We see that in Revelation 22, 15. Also, pigs were unclean and God forbade the Israelites from eating them. We see that in Leviticus 11, verse 7. Dogs and swines were offensive to the Jews. And that's, that's scripture. You can find it. So when you look at Greek, for example, the Greek word holy is hagios which means sacred. And the Greek word translated pearls is margarites. All right? M-A-R-G-A-R-I-T-E-S, margarites. So according to Smith Dictionary, pearls which were frequently mentioned in the New Testament were considered by the ancients among the most precious gems, or precious of gems, and were highly esteemed as ornaments. So Jesus compared the kingdom of heaven to a pearl of great price. We see that in Matthew 13, 46. Pearls are often used as a metaphor for anything of great value. All right? So why did Jesus say we should not give what is holy to the dogs or cause our pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn and tear you in pieces? Dogs and swines, or pigs, as used by Jesus, refer to incorrigible and unreclaimable sinners, hardened scorners or holy of hardened scholars of holy things. Let me repeat that for you. All right. So Jesus, you know, why did Jesus said we should not give what is holy to the dogs or cast our pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces? give you the answer. So dogs and swine are pigs. Swine is pigs, right? So dogs and swines, as used by Jesus, refer to incorrigible and unreclaimable sinners, hardened scorners of holy things. That's what it is. So dogs are those who don't appreciate holy things. The gospel, the truths of the word, that's what dog, dogs are. They regard holy things as common. They show hatred for holy things. And swine, on the other hand, are those who don't value the priceless ornaments or tre treasures of the kingdom of God. So Jesus said because dogs and swines do not appreciate or value holy things and pearls, they are not food for them to eat. And that's it. They will trample them under their feet. And guess what? They will turn and tear you in pieces. And you know why? Because they are wild and they are aggressive. That's big. I don't know about you, but if you grew up in like the third world countries or even the Caribbean and your family have a pig pen and you see the behavior of pigs, you know that they don't value nothing good. You could literally throw their food in the pen that is full of mud and they will still eat it. They don't value nothing. Amen? And um, I mean, if I say this now, you probably get offended. But if you go in the grocery store and look at meat, one of the cheapest meat out there is pork. All right. But I'm not saying that that's the reason why pork is cheap. But you can tell, you know, pigs really don't have any value. All right. So as we have seen, um, you know, from the dictionary meaning of the phrase to cast your purse before swine, it means to offer something valuable 
um, or good to someone who does not know its value. So although people apply this generally, it appears Jesus was talking about things related to the kingdom of God because in the first part of his statement, he mentioned what is holy. He said, do not give what is holy to the dogs. In other words, don't give what is sacred to people that do not appreciate its value. And this would mean the gospel message and things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Amen? I know some of you have so many thoughts in your head, even myself too. It means that once someone has shown himself as an opposition to the word of God or the things of God, don't give it to him again. Don't waste your time continuing to preach to that person. Don't waste your time following up with that person. Don't waste your time on people who have shown that they don't value the message you are sharing with them. They will not only trample on the holy things and the precious truths of the word of God, but they could also attack you and harm you. And also, to be honest with you, even in this world, don't even give your valuable to people that don't even appreciate and value you. Don't give your pearls to people that constantly live to tear you down to paint a negative image of who you are when they don't even know you and even try to use you and abuse you and in the end, curse you on top of it. Don't do it. Don't give them your pearl. All right? So let's, contact. let's continue. Because if you give them that pearl, what they will do, they will not appreciate it. They don't know the value of it. They will turn around, they will attack you, and they also will harm you. Amen? So Jesus didn't send us to force people to accept him as their savior, as we know from the Bible. He has not sent us into the world to compel people to be converted. And the truth is that nobody can convert another person. It is the Holy Spirit that convicts sinners. And we see that in John chapter 16, verse 8. And also, if you look at 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3, it says no one is able to say Jesus is the Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So if someone rejects the precious gifts of salvation you have given him, leave him before, his injury, before he injures you or do something worse. Amen? So, and, 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 you know, we're talking in the context of Christ, but also in life too. Apply that as a principle of life in discerning people, knowing who they are. Don't be keeping to giving people things, not just salvation, but your time, your effort, your advice, your prayers, and they don't even appreciate you. Guess what they will do? You leave them alone because if you don't, they will injure you or do something worse to you. All right? So let's continue. So I want to encourage you, just leave the scorners, leave the mockers or the scoffers alone. Don't let them waste your time. Go to other people who will value the pearl of the kingdom or value the pearl in you. Why? Because the pearl is of great value. and Your pearls are of great value. So Proverbs 7, Proverbs 9, 7 to 8, Proverbs chapter 9, 7 to 8, it says, He who corrects a scoffer gets shame for himself, and he who rebukes a wicked man only harms himself. Do not correct a scoffer, lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. Amen? So be careful, read the Bible, and really pay attention to what the Word of God is saying. So hear what Jesus said about those you stop preaching to. All right. Let's look at Bible. Now let's look at Matthew chapter 10 verses 11 to 15. I'll read it for you. New King James version. All right. So it says now, whatever city or town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy and stay there till you go out. And when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you nor hear your words when you depart from that house or city, shake up the dust from your feet. As surely I say to you, it will be more tolerable, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Amen. And you can also see the same thing recorded in Mark 6, 10 to 11 and Luke 9, 4 to 5. All right. Um, it's, it's no, not quite, but close. All right. So in Mark 6, 10 to 11 and Luke 9, 4 to 5, it's 
it, it says that, you know, the disciples of Jesus, let's do it. Let's read it together. Let's read Mark 6, 10 to 11. Let's not fall off track. Mark 6, 10 to 11. Okay. And he said to them, in what place you enter a house, stay there till you depart from that place. And whoever will not receive you nor hear you, when you depart from there, shake off the dust under your feet as a testimony against them. Assuredly, I say unto you, it would be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Amen. So that's um, Mark 6, 10 to 11. So pretty much the same exact thing. And also let's look at Luke 9, 4 to 5. It's just going to record the same thing. So Luke 9, 4 to 5. It says, whatever house you enter, stay there and from there depart. Whoever will not receive you when you go out of that city, shake off the dust, the very dust from your feet as a testimony against them. Amen. So the disciples of Jesus Christ went ahead of him to a Samaritan village to prepare for him. But the people of the village rejected Jesus because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. So two of his disciples, James and John, were angry and asked for his permission to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did. But what Jesus did, he rebuked them. He said, you do, he said, you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. For the son of man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. You see that in Luke 9, 55 to 56. So the Bible says that um, they left and went to another village. There they will, there, there, um, when they leave to that village, you know, we see where they go to another village, another town, another person, and they preach. And so when the people don't want to hear them, what they do, they leave the dogs and the swine. All right. So the Bible said they left, as we said, went to another village. And there will always be another village, another town, another country, another person to preach to. There will always be another um, village, town, country, person, you know, to give your pearls to. And if they don't want to accept it, guess what? Leave those dogs and those pigs. Amen? So in Acts chapter 13, when the Jews saw the multitudes that had gathered to listen to Paul and Barnabas at Antioch, they were filled with envy. They slandered Paul and argued against whatever he said. Therefore, Paul and Barnabas boldly told them that the word of God needed to be spoken to the Jews first. However, since they rejected it and judged themselves unworthy of everlasting life, they would turn to the Gentiles. And we see that in verses 45 to 46. So to avoid the dogs and the swines harming them, they left them to themselves. That's simple what they did. Read the book of Acts chapter 13. You'll see it. So they avoid them by the dogs and the pigs. You know, by so that they don't harm them and they just left them to themselves. Leave some people to themselves. Leave all the pigs that is in your life to themselves. All right? So a similar thing happened in Acts chapter 18. Let's look at Acts chapter 18, 5 to 7. When Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. But when they opposed him and blasphemed, he shook his garment and said to them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. And he departed from there and entered the house of a certain man named Justus, one who worshipped God, whose house was next door to the synagogue. Amen? So the gospel Jesus had committed to us to preach is the gospel of peace. We see Romans 10, 15 confirms that. Ephesians 6, 15 also confirms that. If anyone or place rejects the gospel of peace, we must live in peace. While we continue to pray to God to touch their hearts. And so if there is a reason to leave a place or some persons to themselves, do so. Don't let those who don't value what is holy or your pearls trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Don't do that. So now that we have talked about that, there's some things we got to do. We got to take action. What are you going to do? So if you're not born again, you need to give your life to Jesus now. And I urge you to take a step. Admit that you are a sinner and you cannot save yourself and repent of your sins. 
Confess your sins to the Lord Jesus Christ. Renounce your past way of life. Your relationship with the devil and his work, you need to renounce it and invite Jesus into your life. As a mark of seriousness um, to mature in the faith, you know, find yourself a Bible-believing church and let them help. Tell them that you give your life to Christ so that they will help you to grow in the, in the things of God and into being a better person and a better Christian. Amen? So um, right now, I want you to take the opportunity because some of you right here, you know, maybe you're in the situation where you qualify even in the category of the pigs. You know, some of you, maybe you have some people inside of your life that are taking your pearls. They're pigs, you know? So don't let these people affect you to the point that you don't even recognize yourself or know yourself. Take this opportunity and ask the Lord for mercy. But surrender them to the Lord and let God be with them. You let God take over those pigs. Collect back your pearls. Ask the Lord for mercy. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you now. Lord Jesus, we come and we just want to admit that, Lord God, we are sinners, God, and we cannot save ourselves. Today we repent of our sins, Lord, and we confess that you are our Lord and Savior. Father, we renounce our past life, the past way of life. We renounce our relationship with the devil and his works. We invite you, Jesus, into our life as a mark of seriousness and maturity and faith. Lord, we come before you and we say thank you, God, because we will follow you. We will gather with the saints and we will serve you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you give us the grace to read the Bible by your mercy. Give us the grace to study your word by your mercy. Give, help us to have the spirit of discernment in the name of Jesus. And Lord, my God, in any way that we have thrown our pearls to any pig, Father, we reclaim them by, by your mercy in the name of Jesus. And Lord, any way, God, any way or any thoughts in us, Lord God, that represent or reflect any pig or any sense of a pig, Lord, we ask you for mercy in the name of Jesus. Righteous, redeeming God, we come before you and we surrender in the name of Jesus. Father, take away every sin from my life. Take away every pain. Take away every bitterness. Take away every hurt. By your mercy, God, convict those pigs, Lord. Let them turn their heart to you. Let them turn around and serve you, O oh God. Let them change from their wicked ways, O oh God. Father, Lord, do not let your wrath and destruction come upon them because of their evil ways in the name of Jesus. Lord, we praise your name. Take all the glory, the honor, and the praise. We worship you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. And so if you're here and you haven't given your Lord, life to the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to say this prayer with you right now. And um, as I say with you, you say it after me. I say, I'll say it for you and you say it after me. And then, as we said, once you accept that Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we invite you to join a Bible, find a Bible-believing church in your era. Join them, let them know you have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And they will disciple you and help you in your walk with your Lord. If you don't have a Bible-believing church, we're very happy to connect you um, to a Bible-believing church in your area. Just reach out to our ministry website. Go to the website, www.ogodariseministries.com. And right there, um, you can send us a message at the contact section and we'll be happy to help you find a Bible-believing church in your area. Amen? All right, so let's do this right now. Let's just say this prayer after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you today. I know I am a sinner and I cannot save myself. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God who died on the cross to save me and he was resurrected on the third day. I repent of my sins and I confess that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I surrender my life to you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I invite you into my heart. Fill me with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I boldly confess that I am saved. And I, I boldly declare that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Father, thank you for saving me. Thank you that I am a child of God. I renounce every way in me that represents the pigs or the dogs, Lord. And Lord, I pray that I will walk with you and according to your word from today in the name of Jesus. And Lord, mighty father, as I accept you, I pray almighty God that you give me the discernment 
to give my pearls to those that are deserving in the name of Jesus. Lord, take all the glory, take all the honor, take all the praise. We give you all the glory as we say thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. So let's pray this one right now, loud and clear. Holy Spirit, help me to be discerning and recognize pigs and dogs. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, help me to be discerning, to recognize pigs and dogs. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, help me to be discerning, to recognize pigs and dogs. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, help me to be discerning, to recognize pigs and dogs. In Jesus' name we pray. My Father, let me not waste my time and my life with swines. In the name of Jesus, my Father, let me not waste my life and my time with pigs. In the name of Jesus, my Father, let me not waste my life and my time with pigs. In the name of Jesus, my Father, let me not waste my life and my time with pigs. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, let me not waste my life and my time with pigs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh Lord, lead me to those that are ready to receive you. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, lead me to those that are ready to receive you. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, lead me to those that are ready to receive you. In the name of Jesus, my Father, lead me to those that are ready to receive you. In the name of Jesus, Oh Lord, lead me to those that are ready to receive you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My Father, remove every pig from my life so they will not trample upon my pearls and tear me in pieces. In the name of Jesus, my Father, remove every pig from my life so that when I trample on my pearls and tear me into pieces. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, remove every pig from my life. So that when I trample upon my pearls and tear me into pieces. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, remove every pig from my life. So that they will not trample upon my pearls and tear me into pieces. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh Lord, protect me from the hostility of pigs. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord my God, protect me, Lord, from the hostility of pigs. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord my Father, protect me, Father, from the hostility of pigs. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord my God, protect me, Lord, from the hostility of pigs. In the name of Jesus, my Father, my God, protect me, Lord, from the hostility of pigs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let the pit dug for me by my enemies. Catch these diggers. In the name of Jesus, let the pit dug for me by my enemies. Catch its diggers. In the name of Jesus, let the pit dug for me by my enemies. Catch its diggers. In the name of Jesus, let the pit dug for me by my enemies. Catch its diggers. In the name of Jesus, let the pit dug for me by its enemies. Catch its diggers. In the name of Jesus, let the pit dug for me by my enemies. Catch its diggers. In the name of Jesus, let the pit Dog for me by my enemies. Catch it, diggers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the witchcraft prison, where my spirit, soul, and body are serving on just terms, catch fire and let me go. In the name of Jesus, in the witchcraft prison, where my spirit, soul, and body are serving on just terms, catch fire and let me go. In the name of Jesus, 
In the witchcraft prison, where my spirit, soul, and body are serving on just terms, catch fire and let me go. In the name of Jesus, in the witchcraft prison, where my spirit, soul, and body are serving on just terms, catch fire and let me go. In the name of Jesus, in the witchcraft prison, where my spirit, soul, and body are serving on just terms, catch fire and let me go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the witchcraft tree in the forest, I sign against my life. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. In the witchcraft tree in the forest, I sign against my life. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. In the witchcraft tree in the forest, I sign against my life. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. In the witchcraft tree in the forest, I sign against my life. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. In the witchcraft tree in the forest, I sign against my life. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. In the witchcraft tree in the forest, I sign against my life. Catch fire in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the witchcraft effigy. Molded for my sake, fall down and die in the name of Jesus. In the witchcraft effigy, molded for my sake, catch fire in the name of Jesus. In the witchcraft effigy, molded for my sake, catch fire in the name of Jesus. In the witchcraft effigy, molded for my sake, fall down and die in the name of Jesus. In the witchcraft effigy, molded for my sake, fall down and die. In the name of Jesus, in the witchcraft effigy, molded for my sake, catch fire. In the name of Jesus, in the witchcraft effigy, molded for my sake, catch fire. In the name of Jesus, in the witchcraft effigy, molded for my sake, catch fire. In the name of Jesus. In the witchcraft effigy, molded for my sake, fall down and die. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every witchcraft storm bringing problems, sickness, failure, loss of wealth, death, miscarriage of blessings into my life. Stop and die. In the name of Jesus, every witchcraft storms bringing problems, sickness, failures, loss of wealth, death, miscarriage of blessings into my life. Stop and die in the name of Jesus. Every witchcraft storm bringing problems, sickness, failure, loss of wealth, death, miscarriage of blessings into my life. Stop and die in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I decree continuous bombardment of witchcraft detention until they discharge and acquit me and my entire family from their detention camp. In the name of Jesus, I decree continuous bombardment of witchcraft de detention camp until they discharge and acquit me and my entire family from their detention camp. In the name of Jesus, I decree continuous bombardment of witchcraft detention camp until they discharge and acquit me and my entire family from their detention camp. In the name of Jesus, I decree continuous bombardment of witchcraft detention camp until they discharge and acquit me and my entire family from their detention camp. In the name of Jesus, I decree Continuous bombardment of witchcraft detention camp until they discharge and acquit me and my entire family from the detention camp. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I decree paralysis upon every spirit of reinforcement in my life, family, and ministry. In the name of Jesus, I decree paralysis upon every spirit of reinforcement in my life, family, and ministry. In the name of Jesus, I decree paralysis upon every spirit of reinforcement, upon every spirit of reinforcement in my life, 
family and ministry. In the name of Jesus, I decree paralysis upon every spirit of reinforcement in my life, family and ministry. In the name of Jesus, I decree paralysis upon every spirit of reinforcement in my life, family and ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every witchcraft agent sent to monitor my progress in the house or office. Receive blindness in the name of Jesus. Every witchcraft agent sent to monitor my progress in the house or office. Receive blindness in the name of Jesus. Every witchcraft agent sent to monitor my progress into the house or the office. Receive blindness in the name of Jesus. Every witchcraft agent sent to monitor my progress. In the house or the office, receive blindness. In the name of Jesus, every witchcraft agent sent to monitor my progress. In the house or office, receive blindness. In the name of Jesus, every witchcraft agent sent to monitor my progress. In the house or the office, receive blindness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every witchcraft devourer. I sign against my life. Destroy yourselves. In the name of Jesus, every witchcraft devourer, I sign against my life. Devour yourselves. In the name of Jesus, every witchcraft devourer, I sign against my life. Devour yourselves. In the name of Jesus, every witchcraft devourer, I sign against my life. Devour yourselves. In the name of Jesus, Every witchcraft devourer, I sign against my life. Devour yourselves in the name of Jesus. Every witchcraft devourer, I sign against my life. Devour yourselves in the name of Jesus. Every witchcraft devourer, I sign against my life. Devour yourselves in the name of Jesus. Every witchcraft devourer, I sign against my life and my family. Devour yourselves in the name of Jesus. Every witchcraft devourer, I sign against my life, my integrity and my character. Devour yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I release myself from any inherited bondage and limitation. In the name of Jesus, I release myself from any inherited bondage and limitation. In the name of Jesus, I release myself from any inherited bondage and limitation. In the name of Jesus, I release myself from any inherited bondage and limitations. In the name of Jesus, I release myself from any inherited bondage and limitation. In the name of Jesus, I release myself from any inherited bondage and limitations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh Lord, send your acts of fire to the foundation of my life and destroy every evil plantation in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, send your acts of fire to the foundation of my life and destroy every evil plantation in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, send your acts of fire to the foundation of my life and destroy Every evil plantation in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let the blood of Jesus flush off from my system every inherited satanic deposit. In the name of Jesus, let the blood of Jesus flush off from my system every inherited satanic deposit. In the name of Jesus, let the blood of Jesus flush off from my system. Every inherited satanic deposit in the name of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus flush off from my system. Every inherited satanic deposit in the name of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus flush off from my system. Every inherited satanic deposit in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I release myself from the grip of any problem. Transferred into my life from the womb. In the name of Jesus, I release myself 
from the grip of any problem transferred into my life from the womb. In the name of Jesus, I release myself from the grip of any problem transferred into my life from the womb. In the name of Jesus, I release myself from the grip of any problem transferred into my life from the womb. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost cleanse every organ in my body. In the name of Jesus, let the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost cleanse every organ in my body. In the name of Jesus, let the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost cleanse every organ in my body. In the name of Jesus, let the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost cleanse every organ in my body. In the name of Jesus, let the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost cleanse every organ in my body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> I break and lose myself from every inherited evil covenant. In the name of Jesus, I break and lose myself from every inherited evil covenant. In the name of Jesus, I break and lose myself from every inherited evil covenant. In the name of Jesus, I break and lose myself from every inherited evil covenant. In the name of Jesus, I break and I lose myself from every inherited evil covenant. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I break and lose myself from every inherited evil curse. In the name of Jesus, I break and lose myself from every inherited evil curse. In the name of Jesus, I break and lose myself from every inherited evil curse. In the name of Jesus, I break and lose myself from every inherited evil curse. In the name of Jesus, I break and lose myself from every inherited evil curse. In the name of Jesus, I break and I lose myself from every inherited evil curse. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I vomit every evil consumption that I have been fed with as a child. In the name of Jesus, I vomit every evil consumption that I've been fed with as a child. In the name of Jesus, I vomit every evil consumption that I've been fed with as a child. In the name of Jesus, I vomit every evil consumption that I've been fed with as a child. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I command all foundational strong men attached to my life to be paralyzed. In the name of Jesus, I command all foundational strong men attached to my life to be paralyzed. In the name of Jesus, I command all foundational strong men attached to my life to be paralyzed. In the name of Jesus, I command all foundational strong men attached to my life to be paralyzed. In the name of Jesus, I command all foundational strong men attached to my life to be paralyzed. In the name of Jesus, I command all foundational strong men attached to my life to be paralyzed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let any rod of the wicked rising up against my family line be rendered impotent for my sake. In the name of Jesus, let any rod of the wicked rising up against my family line be rendered impotent for my sake. In the name of Jesus, let any rod of the wicked rising up against my family line be rendered impotent for my sake. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I cancel the consequences of any evil local name attached to my person. In the name of Jesus, I cancel the consequences of any evil local name attached to my person. In the name of Jesus, I cancel the consequences of any evil local name attached to my person. 
In the name of Jesus, I cancel the consequences of any evil local name attached to my person. In the name of Jesus, I cancel the consequences of any evil local name attached to my person. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh God, arise in your power. Take back my pearls from the pigs in my life. In the name of Jesus, oh God, arise in your power. Take back my pearls from the pigs in my life. In the name of Jesus, oh God, arise in your power. Take back my pearls from the pigs in my life. In the name of Jesus, oh God, arise in your power. Take back my pearls from the pigs in my life. In the name of Jesus, oh God, arise in your power. Take back my pearls from the pigs in my life. In the name of Jesus, my Father, my God, arise in your power. Take back my pearls from the pigs around me, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so we're going to pray these prayers right now, and we're going to call them off for what they are. We're going to ask them to loose their hold over our life and be purged out of our foundation. And as a matter of fact, you know, take this opportunity as we're praying these prayers that you will take it. You know, we talk about the story and the meaning, the genuine meaning of what Jesus meant or what we thought was the meaning of what Jesus meant um, for do not throw, when he said, do not throw your pearls to pigs, Right. So if you look at your life and examine yourself, there are some people around you that are, they fit the description of that analogy. They fit the description of what you call pigs or swines. They fit the description of what you call dog, you know, based on what the Bible is saying. And perhaps you can apply it to so many areas of your life. You know, maybe there's family members like that. Maybe there are friends around you like that. Maybe there are in-laws, you know, even spouses like that. All right. And so we're going to take this opportunity and we're going to commit to God. We're going to start praying and we're going to ask the Lord to remove these pigs from our lives. Ask him to touch their heart so that they repent and turn to him. Because if the pigs in your life give their life to Christ, perhaps maybe the Holy Spirit will work on their heart if they are open to receive the Holy Spirit. You know, we work on their heart and um, they will turn around and be a better person. And maybe then you could actually offer your pearls to them. All right? So why don't you examine yourself? Look in your life. See the, the pigs that are around you in your life. And I'm not saying that you should go around and call people pigs now. But, you know, we are just discussing scriptures is necessary. And also we trying to apply it to even our personal life. All right? So look into your life. Examine yourself. See, you know, the pigs that are around you. See what is happening around you in your life. And I want you to take the opportunity right now. And I want you to just talk to the Lord. Talk to him. If you're on TikTok, please go on YouTube. I'm going to come off the TikTok. Um, so please come around on YouTube. You know, the channel is the same. Oh, God, Arise Ministries. Just come over to YouTube. You can't miss it. It's the same logo. Come over to YouTube. We're coming off TikTok right now. All right. So just examine yourself. And as you're examining yourself, I want you to take the moment, take the opportunity you know, to just ask the Lord to take back those pearls from those pigs in your life. You know, you have given them your time, you've given them your effort, you're giving them, you know, so many things. And yet still what they did, they turn against you and tear you to pieces. You know, enough, you know, is enough is enough. It's time to claim back what is yours. It's time to let this pig know that they have no hold over you. All right. So please take the opportunity right now. Let's just begin to talk to the Lord about these circumstances, about these situations in your life where you need him to do something for you, where you need him to turn away these pigs or these swines from your life and give you peace. Why don't you talk to the Lord right now? Let's just begin to talk to the Lord. Why don't we come to you now? And Lord, we are praying right now that you will remove all these evil pigs from our lives. Father, you said that we shouldn't throw our pearls to pigs. And so, Father, we stand right now, we come in agreement, and we ask you for mercy, O oh God, to, Lord, work on these pigs, Lord. God, we ask you, O oh God, that you touch their hearts so that they will give their lives to you. 
We're asking you, Almighty God, the Mighty Father, that we pray that they will lose their hold from our lives, oh God. And Lord, Mighty Father, let them turn their lives to you in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that every foundational strong man that is operating in the form of peace Lose your hold out of my life and be purged out of my foundation in the name of Jesus. You destructive effect of polygamy. Lose your hold out of my life and be purged out of my foundation. You evil physical design. Lose your hold over my life and be purged out of my foundation. You unscriptural manners of conception. Lose your hold over my life and be purged out of my foundation. You parental curses. Loose your whole out of my life and be purged out of my foundation. In the name of Jesus, you envious rivalry, masquerading as pigs. You loose your whole right now out of my life and be purged out of my foundation. In the name of Jesus, you demonic blood transfusion, you evil dedication, you demonic alteration of destiny. Wherever you are, Loose your whole out of my life and be purged out of my foundation. You demonic incisions, demonic marriage, demonic pollution, even laying on of hands. Loose your whole out of my life and be purged out of my foundation. In the name of Jesus, you demonic sacrifice, you fellowship with family idols, you fellowship with local idols. Loose your whole out of my life and be purged out of my foundation. You fellowship with demonic consultants. Lose your whole lot of my life. You wrong exposure to sex. You expose you. You wrong exposure to evil divine. And lose your whole out of my life and be purged out of my foundation in the name of Jesus. Exposure to evil divine. And lose your whole right now in the name of Jesus. Demonic initiation. Inherited infirmity. Lose your whole lot of my life. And be purged out of my foundation. In the name of Jesus. Anything mighty God. That is masquerading as pigs in my life. Whether in the form of human being. Whether in the form of spirits or personality. Arise in your power O God. Lord mighty father let them loose them whole. Out of my life in the name of Jesus. Loose your whole out of my foundation. In the name of Jesus. Talk to the Lord. Ask him to remove those pigs. Whether it be human being. Whether it be spirits or personalities. Whether it be strong man or powers. Ask him to remove them out of your life. Claim back your pearls. Talk to the Lord and tell him to let you receive back your pearls. Take back your pearls from those pigs. Some of them has drained you physically, spiritually, mentally, financially, emotionally. And then what they do, they turn around and tear you into pieces. Take back your pearls from them. Talk to the Lord. God is good and is worthy to be praised. He said in righteousness, you shall be established and you shall be far from oppression. But thou shalt not fear and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Talk to the Lord. Tell him back your want. Tell him you want back all your pearls that the enemy has stolen from you. Talk to your father. He's a great God. He's worthy to be praised. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Ask the spirit of the living God to fall upon you right now. 
as you have claimed back those pearls and you have cast away those pigs. Ask the spirit of the living God to fall upon you. Ask the Lord to give you the gift to discern so that you can recognize pigs and dogs. You can see them from afar. See, their, see them in whatever form they come. So they will not take your pearl and use you and step on you and tear you into pieces. Now that you're talking to the Lord and you have claimed back your pearls, you have released yourself from those pigs. You have said, you have asked the Lord to set you free from them. Now is the opportunity. Now is the moment. Now is the hour. Talk to the Lord and say, Lord, thank you. Setting me free from those pigs, from those dogs. Talk to him. Thank him for giving you back your pearls. He's a faithful God. God is good and he's never going to leave you nor forsake you. And so, Father, we just want to thank you for restoring us. We thank you, oh God, for giving us back our pearls, Lord. We thank you that even those pigs, God, come in the form of human beings. Father, we are thanking you, oh God, that mighty Father, you are touching their heart so that they will accept you, Lord, as their personal Lord and Savior. You are renewing them so that they become better persons, better human beings, people with soul. Father, remove those blackness from their hearts. Take away those envy and jealousy and bitterness from them. And Lord, my God, begin to visit them wherever they go. Visit them in their sleep. Visit them where they're awake. Anywhere, they, anyone they come in contact with, Lord, visit them, Lord, so that they will have nowhere to run but to you. Father, whatever they have in their life, Lord God, that they think that makes them bigger than God. Father, take it away from them and humble them in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that evil foundational plantation has been out removed out of our lives. Thank you, O God, that mighty Father, you have removed every snare and powers of darkness from our lives. Thank you, God, that mighty Father, we will never throw our pearls to pigs anymore in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you are faithful. Blessed be your holy name. Do you deserve the glory, the honor, and the praise? We worship you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, so that's it in terms of um, what we're doing right there. I want to encourage you to take this opportunity to like the video, share it with your friends, your family, and loved ones. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so and also hit the notification bell so that whenever we go live, you'll be able to see us and join us as we pray. So please, if you are just joining now, please listen over the message that we talk about. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. Um, please don't just look at it and say, oh, this person will offend me, so the person is a pig. No, please listen to the, the teaching, read the scripture into context and have the great understanding why we say what we say and also what the Bible is saying. Amen. And so if you're here and you want to sow into the ministry, um, you can go to our ministry website, www.ogotariseministries.com. And you can see all the ways there you can give. You can give even right here on the YouTube channel. You can give to Super Sticker, Super Tank, Super Chat. And you can give through um, Gifting People membership and also you being a member of the YouTube channel. And as you do that, we trust that the Lord will bless you. Amen. All right, so with that said, we're going to just play three more prayer points, and then we're going to just wrap it off to the, for this for the day. So if you have your seed, your offering, we're going to pray over that 
see it an offering right now. You can bring it out and then we're going to pray these three prayers and that's it for the day. Let's come into our offerings before the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We just want to thank you because you are God that will never fail. Father, you said in your word in 2 Corinthians 9, 7, that each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Father, Lord, we thank you, O God, because every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Father, we thank you, O God, in the name of Jesus, that your word says that you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through, through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Father, as your children are given, Father, you honor your word over their offering. Honor your word over this message that we have um, shared with them. Honor your word over, Lord, the prayers that we have prayed, Lord, mighty Father. And Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as they present their offering, Father, by your mercy, remove every pig's from their lives in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray almighty God that Lord, you will also give them the discernment to recognize pigs and even dogs, Lord, mighty father. And father, Lord, I pray that you give them the grace that they will see the light of God. You know, that Lord, you will let the light of God show in them so that even the pigs and those dogs will turn from their ways and turn to you, Lord Jesus. And Father, we pray, God, mighty Father, we ask you now as they give this offering that, Lord, everything in their life that the pigs have taken, has taken from them and then tear them into pieces because they have taken their pearls. Father, we ask you for restoration in the name of Jesus. Almighty God, we give you praise and we say thank you. Father, we bless your holy name because you have heard and you have answered their prayers. We thank you, O God, because your word makes it clear that everything that is good comes from you. And so all these gifts that you're giving, it is coming from you, God. And we ask you, O God, to multiply them 100-fold in the name of Jesus. We cover all of their testimonies. We cover all the answers to their prayers in the blood of Jesus. And Lord, we will testify of your goodness and of your power to the glory of your name. You deserve the glory, the honor, and the praise. We worship you, almighty God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. All right. So we're going to pray these three prayers as promised, and then we're going to wrap up. So let's pray this one. You evil foundational plantations, come out of my life with all your roots. In the name of Jesus, you evil foundational plantations, come out of my life with all your roots. In the name of Jesus, you evil foundational plantations, come out of my life with all your roots. In the name of Jesus, you evil foundational plantations, come out of my life with all your roots. In the name of Jesus, you evil foundational plantations, come out of my life with all your roots. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I break and lose myself. From every form of demonic bewitchment. In the name of Jesus, I break and lose myself from every form of demonic bewitchment. In the name of Jesus, I break and lose myself from every form of demonic bewitchment. In the name of Jesus, I break and lose myself from every form of demonic bewitchment. In the name of Jesus, I break and I lose myself. From every form of demonic bewitchment. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. I release myself. From every evil domination and control. In the name of Jesus. I release myself. From every form of evil domination and control. In the name of Jesus. I release myself. From every form of evil domination and control. In the name of Jesus, I release myself from every evil domination and control. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we just want to thank you for these prayers. Father, we thank you for your word that clearly shows us that we should not throw our pearls to pigs. Almighty God, we thank you. Mighty Father, that from today we have received the grace to discern so that we will know who to give our pearls. Mighty Father, who we are not to give it to. 
Almighty God, we pray that your word will be useful for your children from today. And Lord, they will have understanding and discernment when it comes on to throwing their pearls to those that deserve it or those that don't deserve it. Almighty God, we pray that you pour fresh fire upon your people, pour fresh anointing upon them, guide them, lead them in your path in the name of Jesus. We soak our prayers and the answer to our prayers in the blood of Jesus. We soak our testimonies in the blood of Jesus. Almighty God, we ask you to take control now in the name of Jesus. To you deserve the glory, the honor, and the praise. We come against every spirit of fear. We come against every panic. We come against everything that the enemy is sending our way as a result of these prayers. And we declare, Lord, and clear that no weapon that is formed against us will prosper. And all the tongues that rises up against us, all the pigs that want to rip us to pieces, Father, by your mercy, you have shut them up in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you are holy. Thank you because you are faithful. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, so God bless you, everyone. We trust that you are blessed from this message. Um, we want to encourage you before you go to like the video, share it with your friends, your family, and loved ones, and subscribe to the channel. So God bless you. You do have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you very soon. Take good care. And don't Remember, do not throw your pearls to pigs. God bless you.